Hey guys, in this video I'll be showing you how to set up scan an email using Gmail's outgoing mail server for your Sharp copier. I'm going to be using a newer model, which is a, which is a Sharp MX 5070B, but it, it doesn't matter uh, which model you use. It's all going to be pretty much the same. It may look a little different in the back end, uh, but if you have a newer uh, Sharp model, then this video uh, will look pretty much almost exactly to what your machine is going to look like. So let's get started. First off, I need to let you guys know that you have to have your copier on your network and you have to assign it an IP address and know what that IP address is. Um, I do have a video uh, in the description uh, below on how to set up uh, your copier network assigned to an IP address. So I recommend you, you do that before you get started because you won't be able to move forward from here. So assuming that you know your IP address of the copier, I'm gonna, I already know mine, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, open up my browser and on my address bar, I'm going to type in the IP address of the copier. And here you are in the back end of the machine. Uh, you have to log in as admin. So uh, default password is lowercase admin, as you can see. And default username is administrator. Uh, you click on login. If you guys can get past the screen, I got some bad news for you guys. Uh, you're, you're in trouble. You're going to have to contact an authorized sharp dealer to reset that for you. Uh, don't bother going on Google. Don't bother wasting your time searching online. There is no way to do it without an official, very long uh, key uh, phrase that sharp generates for you. And, and you have to give them the serial number of the machine. It's, it's, it's a lot involved in it. So don't, don't bother going online. There is no easy how to reset password on the sharp. Their sharps are very secure. So let's move. Let's move on. Uh, assuming that you're in an in admin mode, uh, we're going to select uh, system settings. Uh, click on network settings. Very important that you set up your DNS settings. Uh, if you are on your DNS, uh, you'll go ahead and uh, type it in here. If you don't know what your DNS setting is, uh, I recommend uh, you just use Google DNS. you're here, 
you're done, uh, you can get back here if you want. But now we got to move back to the back end of the copier, so the web interface of the copier. So we're back to Sharp. Now we can move forward. SMTP settings for Gmail uh, is smtp.gmail.com. Okay, that's the primary server uh, using Gmail account. Now you could go ahead and use Outlook or Office 365 or so forth. Um, we're not going to go into the settings of that, but they, they use, of course they have their own server, uh, port numbers, and, and so forth. So it's your responsibility to go ahead and uh, get that information. But uh, it's going to be pretty similar to what I'm doing here. But I'm using Gmail because I like it. Of all of them, it's the most reliable. And I, it's, it's my go-to uh, server when it comes to setting up scanning here. Okay. So anyhow, uh, center name, you can put your name, whatever, the company name or so. I'm just going to put my initials. Sender address, uh, it's going to be your Gmail, uh, you know, your Gmail uh, email. So I'm going to say Okay. Now uh, we're going to definitely have to click on Enable SSL. Don't forget to do this. Looks like it froze there for a second, but it'll come back. Uh, now you're going to click on SMTP. There you go. Okay, back. Uh, make sure I got this right. Yep. Okay. So SMTP authentication. We're going to click on that. And uh, username, again, is going to be your email. you got to click on change password and that's going to be your phrase okay it's not going to be your gmail uh, and i repeat it's not going to be your gmail password it's going to be the generated code that your account generated for specifically for the copier so i'm going to go ahead and copy that and i'm going to paste it so that's going to be my password okay so you hit submit uh, it's going to ask me to log in again Sometimes it doesn't. And I'm going to make sure that it's saved. It actually did not save it, so sometimes that happens. Uh, well, let's do it again. This doesn't always happen, but sometimes it does. If you take too long on it, that it sort of uh, falls off just for security purposes. So I'm going to go ahead and type it. Password going to be the code, and we are going to hit submit. Now, what I like to do right here, it says your request was successfully processed. Make sure you do that. Now, I like to come down and execute. This is like a test, okay? Uh, you click OK here, and on the very top, it will tell you if your test is successful. And if it, this is a good sign here, so you know that it accepted your password and everything set properly. So now, we're going to go to our address book. Okay, so I'm going to create just a test. I already have one here, but let me go ahead and go through the setting again. I'm going to create uh, add. If you already have a contact in there, it will automatically select a number for you, so you don't have to put anything. But if it's your first contact, just just put a one there, and then it will automatically go uh, it'll, uh, automatically number the rest of the contacts that have you put in there. So address name is where what you wanted to um, read on the copy. I'm just going to put test. Okay. Initials, I'm just going to put T. You can put whatever you want. Uh, but if it's going to be yours, you want to put your, your name, uh, like let's say John's email or Sandy's email, whatever you like. It's, I'm just calling it test just for this video. Make sure you click on register this address to be added as a frequent user. It's very important. That way you can have a shortcut to the copy, and I'll show you in just a second what, what I mean by that. So once you have that, uh, scroll all the way down. Make sure the email uh, tab is selected here. And just type in the email address associated with this person. In this case, it's test. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, send it to my email. There we go. And you don't have to worry about anything. Just make 
sure it's on PDF. It usually is, but if it's not, if it's on one of these other ones, just make sure. Most people like to scan using PDF. Uh, set as default user, make sure that's on, and hit submit. So now, guys, let's go to the copier and go ahead and send us, uh, send your first um, scan. Okay, guys, let's walk over to the copier here. So, okay, so uh, let me go ahead and turn the lights off so you can see this better. All right, so this is your home screen. Uh, so there's several ways you can get to your address bar, uh, or address book, I should say. Uh, but, you know, when you're in your home screen, if you have the EV scan, just select EV scan and your address book. And here's a one that I, uh, the, the newest one that I did with you guys. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, select that and hit OK. Make sure something's on the glass here. And now I'm going to hit, uh, whether you want black and white or color. And there you have it. Uh, so since I'm using the glass, it, ask, it thinks that I have another sheet uh, that I want to add there, but I'm just going to hit read end. But if you're using the document feeder, uh, that usually doesn't happen. So. Um, one way to check if your job scans went through, if you don't see anything here pending, uh, then it went through fine. If you click complete, you'll, it'll say send okay, so you know it went through. That's the one I just finished doing. So let's go back to the computer and uh, retrieve that email. Okay guys, I'm back to the computer. As you can see, here's my email, and this is my document that I just scanned, and there you have it. So. Uh, good luck, guys. I hope this video helps, and um, send us a message. Don't give us your thoughts.